I just need to clean up those bogies. Uh, two of them was because of roll away. Also, that kind of st stuff can happen on this course very often. So I just need to keep doing what I'm doing and avoid those OBs. The par four that I birdied, I forget what hole it was. Like that hole is one of the hardest par fours out here, I think. I just threw a really good drive and threw a good second shot and had gave myself like a 40 foot uphill putt and I was able to get, gain a couple strokes with that. So I was happy about that. I was throwing a disc really well today. Didn't make too many mistakes, gotta keep it like that. I like that you have to do a lot of placement shots and then it still has the powerful holes. And my sidearm was feeling really good today and there's a lot of sidearms out here. And I think it's in my top five courses now. I love it. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the 2024 Chess.com Invitational. We've got round two front nine action here in Brooksville, Florida. Big Germ, Paul Uliberry, Big Barry Commentary, bringing you all the action from this beautiful Olympus disc golf course. Yeah, and uh, today we have beautiful weather out mm. here. Just absolutely picture perfect. A little wind, so that's going to make some things a little bit little interesting. Uh, compared to yesterday, we'll just say a little wind. Ricky Wysocki doing it in all kinds of different ways, like usual, but that scramble is really... 100% scramble, Paul. That's really sticking out to me, especially with as tough of a course as this is. Um, that's going to save you a lot of strokes. Up. Just the willpower. I mean, he just always finds a way to get up and down and save the pars. Anthony Brella had a clean round going until 18. He was eight under on the course through the wind in round one. Took an unfortunate double bogey, but he is tied for the lead right now. And my goodness, this guy right here, Niklas Antala, had 10 birdies yesterday. 10! Had four bogeys in the incredibly difficult conditions. He is tied at six under, and we get to take a look here at this fellow right here, ladies and gentlemen. Joseph Anderson is a player to be looking out for. He has really started to break out last season, but now we get to see him here on Jomez, see what he's got. AKA Joey Buckets. Joey Buckets, and I think you can tell right away why we call him that. Hole one, par three, 357 up the hill and to the right. If you're throwing a backhand, slide it right under this pine on the right. If you're throwing the sidearm, make sure you get it out wide so you get a lot of area to skip it towards the bucket. As you can see, all around it is danger, so starting off is gonna be kind of a tough test for putts unless you're parked. Ricky had so much power on this hole yesterday. He slipped off the tee and juiced it about 80 long. See if he can dial that in a little bit today. He stays on his feet, and this looks a lot better. Go in. Oh, wow. Sit. Oh, what a little break. Mm -hmm. Anthony Brell is saying that this is a course that has already fallen into his top five favorite courses. You got to love having that confidence playing a course you love, especially when you're tied for the lead. This is a little heavy on the hyzer. It's going to need to sit, and it, it's okay. Uh, he made that putt yesterday he to, certainly start his, did. to start his round, so see if he decides to go for it again. Three set, 357 up the hill is a long distance to carry a Raptor for him, but Anthony Brell is one of the few players who can make that disc work. I mean, look at how pretty this flight is. He gets a little heavy on the turn, but that's still a pretty good line. If it's a little higher without the Anheuser, that's probably getting all the way there. One of the smoothest players in the world, Nicholas Antala. Here we have Joey Anderson, who... Just a little flick of the wrist, and this thing's going to get all the way there. He's got a lot of power in that forehand. I haven't actually seen much of his game, so I'm excited to see what he's capable of. Turnover here. This is tough. And a decent out. That's going to be a circle one edge look for the par. Scary. Because you kind of have to run that one. Yeah. Because it's for par, you yes. can't lay those up. Correct. If it's for birdie, you can kind of be like, okay, I'll give it a, a soft, soft bid yeah, or soft something. One. But mm -hmm. this one, you got to give it the full treatment. Here's Anthony from 50. Gosh, man. What a great putt. Little nose up spinner, keeping that disc elevated all the way there and just perfectly on the middle of the pole. What a great way to start your round. I mean, he misses that. It's a guaranteed bogey. 
guaranteed unless you catch some sort of lucky break on one of those trees. And you're still going to have to make a nice putt back up the hill. So, Ricky from a little bit closer and just knocking the basket over. I think those things are secure to the ground because that thing would have fallen and rolled the amount of pace that Ricky made that putt with. Watch some coverage from a few years prior and watching some people throw throw this hole. Here's Joey O oh, sit. It could hit on the ground soon enough. And it's not the putt you want for bogey. But that's a good putt. Anyways, uh it just looks like a shorter hole. It's not. It's far. It's far up the hill. Oh, yeah. It is not an easy hole. No. It looks easy on coverage. Well, and compared. now now playing it, mm -hmm. it is it is very tough. It is a power forehand to get up there. If this if this hole were in the middle of the course, you'd be like, oh wow, this is like the easiest looking hole we've seen so far. And it would be, but it just starts right off. And it's not the easiest hole in the course. It's actually somewhere in the middle in terms of difficulty, but it just it, it teases you because it's right there in front of you. Right. Hole two is a lot more difficult through the narrow tunnel here. OB down the right side begins to open up as you can see here. You want to make your disc go off to the left side for the best possible angle into this pin because it is very well protected on the back side as you have to make your way up two different levels of shelves. And you can see those sticks and branches and leaves all extend into that gap there. So getting around that corner cleanly is such a tall task. And Ricky's got this one turned over. It's such a smooth move on this one in round one, and he ended up getting nearly 500 feet of distance. Yeah, that's going to be way back there. Playing for par now. You don't think you can get it there? It would be remarkable, in my opinion. This is going to be tight. Yeah, I think he's going to be okay with that. He can do a standstill or maybe a one- or two-step forehand from there. This is my favorite form to watch right here for a backhand player on tour right now. It's my favorite. It I mean, look at that effortless oh. effortless line, power, generated with really a smaller body than you're used to. You're used to the Calvins, the Rickies, the Anthony Barella. Minimal movements, too. It's mm -hmm. just so efficient. Joey's going to also flirt with that left side and get the nice roll from the hill. That's huge. And yeah, that extra 30, 40 feet makes a big difference, but also the angle is not as obstructed. See, I think Rick, Rick has the distance to get all the way there if he wants it. I, I think the best he can do is get to like circle two and then make a big putt, but he's actually outdriven the landing zone. He's going to have some sawgrass and other limbs and pines and a bunch of things in the way. Oh, no. Anthony turns this one over, and this is skied. Heisering to right next to Rick. It's tricky over there. There's little routes to get to the pin. Shouldn't be too too bad, but if you want to get frisky, a lot of low-hanging stuff. Yeah, this is a better-looking line because it's tighter, but it's pushed through the gap. It's so hard to get that around the corner and then have the disc heiser and die at that right time. See if Niklas can figure it out. I like this. If it's tight enough. Yeah, and then that tree. I mean, just so many things to avoid. But that is, if that's not in the circle, it's right near it. So great shot from Niklas from yeah, back there. Yeah, look at this look. Not a lot. Ooh, gooey. <laughs> a little rain from yesterday's round. Still lingering around. The course was in great conditions considering the rain, uh, but the conditions outside are just, you know, you can see they're beautiful. Niklas, a look for birdie. That's going to be low. Missed opportunity there. And Joey low for his birdie look. That ended up a de decent spot. Yeah. Yeah, it looked like that one was kind of squared up nice for his style of putt, too. Mm -hmm. You want to get that over the rim. One of the things that I, I keep hearing about Joey is he doesn't miss putts. I mean, we're not going to count that one against him. Obviously obstructed. And hole one, that is a 
challenging putt from 40 feet for the par save. But that is certainly one of the, the things that have been talked about Joey in his game. So all four players walk away with par, and we head over to a check-in here with Kyle Klein. Such a great way to finish the season last year by winning the USCGC and being runner-up at the Pro Tour Championship. This drive is a little short of ideal, and he's got to go stand still. Inside line, flipping up. That is a great work from there. And look at this roll. Good putt and end the hole right there, right in the middle. Two under through three. That is an awesome start. Look at that. So Raw power. power. Yeah, that just generates power for days. Ricky and Anthony stay at the top. Kyle Klein with that birdie on three. Just one back. Yeah, hole three, par four, 531. One of the easier holes on the course. You just have to miss this tree branch right here in this tree. Heiser in front of all this gunk. <laughs> Land on the on the road. Yeah, not your favorite. And then a little heiser up to the basket. Or it, oh, you're going to see a lot of people scrambling here. Sidearm turnovers, sidearm rollers sometimes too. Low ceiling air bounces, turnovers. I mean, mm -hmm. pick, pick your choice how you want to get up to the bucket. But this is the first order of business is miss that branch he's gonna be going yeah he ah. connects on the branch <laughs> and that puts you in the no birdie zone i think there's something there though yeah i do I, i've seen a couple people over there that have gotten looks i've been quick to judge in the past i'll say difficult birdie yeah anthony this looks a bit long and i think he's found his drive to land in the vines there's kind of some vines on that right side of the road that can be a little bit tricky, but that's the side of the fairway that you'd like to miss on. And this is inside, I think, again. You want to get around that yes. pine. Yeah. I think AB has to play go long, if anything. Go long, go if long. anything. I agree. That's a good-looking drive from Joey. It's lower, so it's going to penetrate more. Yeah, that's, that's right good. where you want yep. to be. Ooh, he first up inside germ overturned but look at that he gets away with it okay all the way up to the pin might have one of those skinny trees obstructed for his putt but loving life there to get all the way up to the green yeah you're right rick's looking just for a putt out of there it's hard to tell what someone's going to get in that area there there are a few places where you can scramble like nikos looked like, looked like he was in a really similar spot but here he is getting a little bit more aggressive with the forehand turnover. That's going to get all the way there, I think. Yeah, circle's edge. Probably 40 feet, maybe just inside that. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of these baskets right on the edge of a steep incline. Makes all the shots That's really a tough. Great That's great shot. Parked. Good work contorting the body for Barella. Yeah, it's one of the things he's really good at is those touchy, putter catch shots you know and if you can match that with the raw power that he has that's a dangerous combination because he can get way far off the tee and then have that feathery touch into the green nick lost oh just sets it in there i didn't even look like a putt look like he was just softly just dropping it in there that's exactly what he did i think just a little shout out to lowry markinen finish NBA All-Star, shooting three-pointers like crazy. Joey Buckets. And the Buckets are finally bucketing. First birdie of the round for Joseph. I'm digging his steez with the, the tie-dyed bucket, too. It's a good-looking look. I Anthony love the nickname. Now, it's a, it's, it's a yeah. fantastic nickname.
on to the challenging, actually the most challenging hole in the course, hole four. Par four, 664 feet. This is one that was birdied two times in round one. The tee shot is a, a flip up, maybe a mid range, maybe a, a stand up fairway driver inside and low, maybe even a turnover forehand off the tee. And from there, you just kind of figure it out. I yeah. mean, there are some good spots you can land in, but it's so difficult to land in those spots. And from there, you're not guaranteed anything. And AB says, I'll try this one. Now this play, I figured we see some people try it, but I have no idea where the drive lands. And that's apparently where it lands. I mean, that's really good. Yeah. That's really good. The tree that's on the right side of your screen right now is the landing zone if you throw it perfect down the middle. I think he's got a sidearm all the way to the pin from there. We'll see. That is what you're trying to do. If you can just beat that first tree, I think Niklas would be loving the position. That's a bogey. That is, there's no, yeah. there's uh, no I, nothing I agree. that he can do from there. It, it would take two of the best shots possible and an incredible putt exactly to save par that is how you put yourself in great yes. position and even there joseph is going to have a side hill lie and awkward footing but that's the best drive I, we've seen so far and ricky will not be getting a birdie again in round number two It's all of it. Yeah. Okay. All right. It, my only fear is that he's not far enough right. He's not. He's far enough anywhere. Yeah. Like from if that's a drive, yeah, we'd be like, oh my gosh, great drive, no chance. Yeah, e birdie. it'd be an easy part. Oh, oh no. Well, brutal. That was abrupt. Hit a rock. This is just a layup uh, play, I think. I don't think that's I. You can get there from there. It, that's the that's the I think yeah. the only way that you can get a birdie feasibly is to land right where Joseph landed. Yeah, I might be wrong, but it just looked like that was a mid range for some reason to me. Mm. But I'm I'm probably wrong. And Anthony's great shot skips off the top of the hill. I mean, if there was a way to play the hole for birdie, I think that's a very viable play. Just don't get the skip somehow. See, and he just he's trying to stay away from that OB. On, on the right there so he gets heavy on the hyzer and it's at 90 feet mm -hmm. and uphill now ricky's got to get up and down to save the bogey asking a lot it is asking a lot there are a lot of enemies at the gates there and ricky finds one of them he's got 50 feet left for the bogey pretty buttery shot here and Joey Bucket's going to walk away with a par, most likely. See if Niklas can come up with the incredible par save. This would be remarkable. Dang good try from where he was back there. It's as good as you can do, really. He, and he, he had a little too much hyzer, so that mm -hmm. might change my perspective of somebody being able to get an up and down from there. Anthony Barella. That would have been a huge highlight, especially with Ricky in danger of taking a double bogey to take a huge lead there if that birdie goes in. And Ricky's bogey bid off the right side, it will be a double. I mean, look at this. Joey just plays it really good, and he has to knock down a 25-footer. You miss a putt on this one, mm. it's not going anywhere but down the hill if you miss low. I got to give a shout out to where it's due, man. Casey White getting the only birdie in the field. Best wow. players in the world. Casey White, the only one to get the birdie here in round two in calm conditions. Just tells you a lot about the hole. Two people were able to make it into circle one in regulation. I don't know who the other one was, but I know that they probably didn't feel good about not birdying. <laughs> All right. Well, you're probably like, oh, sweet, we're over that. Now we get to go into hole five. It's a birdie hole. It's 408 <laughs> feet. The problem is you if you hit the gap, which is the main objective, hit this gap on Heiser, I'm waiting to see somebody get past these guardians, and I don't know if it's going to happen. It's... If you can, you can sneak into circle one. Haven't seen it yet. A lot of good shots are landing about 45 feet to 40 feet. 
It's actually, I think that they have corrected the distance. It says 408 here because that's what it was originally marked at, but I think it's actually 436. Okay, that makes that makes more sense. And this is going too straight. This isn't going to be good. And it could even be 456. It, I think it actually is 456. It could be 600. Yeah, no. You but, can't see the hole. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know how they came up with that number, but they put a piece of tape over the original distance. Now, this looks pretty good. Yeah, this is going to get to the left side over there. And that's, that's 45 feet. That's where I think we saw Macbeth's drive land yesterday. I like the shape that Nicholas throws. A little hyzer flip. Let's see how this works. Oh, he oh. pulls the junk out well, of it. When was the last time you saw Nicholas miss a shot like that? That's just something he doesn't do. Well, I was already calling a nice hyzer flip down the middle. That's on you. Change, yeah, changing perspectives for me. That's a post-produced jinx. I don't know how that exists, but Ricky you did it. with the park job. <laughs> yeah, I got him to pull it. <laughs> <laughs> don't forget, folks, we are still playing in the same tournament as these guys. So <laughs> we've got a lot of power. <laughs> <laughs> and this round's over. <laughs> Niklas from just an awful spot has to just manufacture some. Oh. And just that's tough from there. Still has a lot of work left to save the bogey. I mean, not that much work unless you do that. Yeah, it, you it, can't throw that high, buddy. He gets through, kinda, but no guarantee. And Ricky, that was a strange little place there. I don't know if he was playing for the ground player, if he just released it low, but should be able to save the the par. Look at this move. Oh, I don't like this. Forehand rollers from 56 feet are just never fun. Well, you never go practice those in your backyard. Well, maybe you should. I would. Joey oh. Buckets, right side chain out. I would say don't throw it hard. He needed to land that with a little kind of left to right um, angle on. Oh, man. And Nicholas. a double bogey for Nicholas. Yeah. Looks like he. That way it doesn't curl so fast with mm -hmm. that much velocity they put on. Great putt, though, cleaning it up. That is a tough one. Straddle away from the tree up the hill for par. It's going to be an awesome thing to keep our eyes on as Ricky taps in. Oh, that's not even a tap. We'll go ahead and say he putts in his par. But Anthony Brella, the, the one thing that really kept him from winning the big event that he is it's still the monkey on his back is just seemed like the putt just kind of broke down uh, inside that 30 foot range, the 25 to 30 foot range. But, you know, all indications to the first two rounds of the season, I mean, he looks very confident in the greens. He was making a lot of jump putts and long distance putts last year. It's just that 27 to 35 foot range. If he can knock those down, I mean, we could be witnessing a superstar emerging. 100% agree. I mean, it just seems like Seems a little more stoic. That's something you can't mm, teach. Yeah. You know what I mean? When you practice, you watch Ricky play, you watch Paul play early on in their career. And I, I'd even say Nicholas. I meant he, to say experience. It's yeah, experience, not practice. His, the way that they are. Yeah. yeah that they, right. they approach just walking down the fairway yeah. is. It's an aura. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, it's a hard thing to teach for sure. It's some people have it. And then there's the rest of us. Yeah, you have it. You have it in spades, my friend. Look at this hyzer. This is what you want to do. Hyzer. Make, Whoa. Sh make sure you don't go to the right side. Uh, that That's may okay, have though. leaked out a little right, but he got so far on the corner that he really cut off a lot of distance on the hole. This one is playing tricky because it's a left to right wind, so they're pushing him kind of straight again. I like this. The high hyzer kind of nose up into the rough, you know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Spicy spot. I, it, he's going to have a lean-out forehand. I don't think yeah. he's buried that deep. Oh, it's par, probably. You, you think? Yeah, yeah. I think you can manage a par easily from there if you want to get a little frisky with it. Okay. Ricky finally showing us how to land it properly in the fairway. On somebody else's disc. It's a little rock to commemorate where Ricky's drive once landed. <laughs> Look at that. And Niklas, that looks like to be right in the money spot. It's hard to get it as far left as you'd like without being too far left like we saw there with Joey Buckets. Yep. Yeah, I guess it, going back to the, the Anthony thing, it's like a, a nervous energy 
that you see with some players Mm -hmm. where it's the moment and you can feel the nervous energy, but you don't when it's Macbeth or Paul or Nicholas. It's like these guys got it. They settle in. Mm -hmm. And look at this rip from Joey's. I mean, that thing was still lifting. I had plenty of energy to get well past the green. Connects on the high canopy and falls down eh, 40 feet short. It might also be from the viewer. We've never seen those people win, so we have the nervous energy for them because we're like, oh, are they going to break through? And Interesting. Then, you know, like Isaac Robinson, I remember the first time he won at Idlewild. I felt nervous for him, and he right. just kept knocking down those putts, and then all of a sudden the nerves for me went away over time, and he's just pure in shots. You're like, Look I guess at this shot. Oh, that is beautiful. beautiful turnover control from Barella inside the circle. Yeah, I mean, when, when Isaac knocked down the 50-footer on 17. Yep. That was a moment, really. When he already had like a, a three or four stroke lead, you're like, dude, like they're dead. Stop killing him. Yeah. Like you don't need to kill him anymore, man. Uh, oh, Joey Buckets off right side. Inside 40. He's actually inside the circle, even. Yeah, that's his miss. If he's going to miss, it's going to be on the right side. Gets this one to go up and in. Nice job. No commentary jinx. Um, I mean, to be fair, he did look very calm. Yeah, uh, I was putting with Joey first round. He was one of the early cards as Nicholas lines this up. Nice, nice birdie. A little stab through the little whatever you want to call that scruffy stuff. Yeah, through the scruffy stuff. Okay. And then uh, anyways, I was talking to him, and he's like, yeah, I'm just pull When I miss, I'm pulling them right. Okay. And so that's what we can look for. I was wondering where you got that information from, but you got it straight from the source. Yep. I mean – he was pulling them right, and he still managed to shoot six under, and he's on lead card. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I don't know if he missed any of the first round, but that's just what he told me. And he said it's because that he's flattening his putt out. If you notice from last year, if you ever played with the kid, he okay. putted with a lot of hyzer. We got Gavin Rathbun here, also playing hole six. And that is past where you want to land into the sawgrass. Gavin with an incredible round, round one. And he's sitting at one under. He's right there in the mix in second place. And look at that throw. Is it going to come out, though, Jerm? No. Go. Uh, where is it? It's in the, in the stuff. Okay. And what did you call it? The scruffy stuff. The, the scruffy stuff. Kyle Klein looking cool as a cucumber. Throwing inside, getting through. Yep. And Gavin on the other side of the spectator ropes. Never where you want to be when you're playing. Good putt, though. Easy par for the kid. I think we all know where this is going. Right on the stripe. I've always liked Kyle's putt, and now that it's a proven major champion putt, I like it even more. He has so much talent in his hands, man. Kyle Klein, next generational type player. Yeah, we're going to be seeing him for a very, 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 very long time. Want to play chess but don't know how to get started? Try chess.com. Play for free against someone at your level or challenge one of our friendly computer bots. Sign up and play for free at chess.com today. Looking at hole seven here, par three, 350 foot straight tunnel with a left to right slope. Got to get over this hill, obviously. And from there, you just have to avoid this oak here on the right side and all the Spanish moss hanging down and somehow get your disc to put the brakes on this incredibly slopey green. Tricky little one right here because you want to throw it on hyzer to stay away from that tree on the right. So you want to throw it on hyzer, but then if you hyzer, for some reason because of the low ceiling, it pushes you to the left side. You want it to be a little flatter, like A, B. See how it was like a minor hyzer? I think you want to aim left with flat so it counter skips to the right. That would be perfect. That's, 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 that's terrifying. Like, yeah, of. it is terrifying, but I think that's the best way mm -hmm. to, to shape the hole. I like the Kind way. of like what we saw right there with Niklas. Yep.
this is a, a shape that this kid really is good at throwing. Eyes are flipped, straight oh, shot. Oh, my goodness. Deal. And just hits a pocket of mud or something, just stopped right there. That'd be a tree. He hit the tree uh, and then ricocheted right into the... Is into it? The, is that what he hit? Yeah. Yeah, okay. I have eyes. So do you. Use I, them. I mean, ouch, but... I, <laughs> it's okay, dude. <laughs> Ricky, this is the scary putt that he laid up in round one and doesn't look like he's going to pay the ultimate sacrifice for getting aggressive. Like my comment two seconds ago. <laughs> That's aggressive. Very good putt from Anthony, and that brings him to four under on the round. And the stoic nature of Anthony Barella. I mean, if it's any reason to get nervous... It, it, those reasons go out the door when you've got a four or five shot lead. He is cruising right now. Niklas also with a great birdie. See if he can get this one center. Oh, yeah. Beautiful putt right there after Good hitting delivery. the tree that we could see. I got it, yeah. The I think tree. I think you're actually right. I was just, I, I, he might not have hit that tree. <gasps> oh, no. Ricky Rick. does pay the price. And that was on him. That, that is a putt he has got to make. So a uh, double bogey and a bogey for Ricky. He is now two over for the round. He is going the other direction while Anthony just keeps racking up birdies. And Joey. You know, it's funny because we're in second place. We watch Ricky miss those putts. If that was Joey missing those putts, we would be like, oh, yeah, nervous because he's on the lead card. But Ricky was just like, oh, what was that? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Mm, you know yeah, what I mean? Well, like, you just know it's coming back. Exactly. Like, it's he, kind of interesting, though, to think about. The field actually usually likes to see Ricky make those putts because when he misses them, he usually rebounds with five birdies. <laughs> so it's true. actually net positive for the field for him to just make the first one. <laughs> exactly. You, what's so funny about that is you're 100% correct in that statement. Hole eight, par three, blind, 500. What was that? 560? 487. Sorry. You I'm would thinking be, of You would definitely be the one to break down a blind hole. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony getting nearly all the distance just forehand alone. And that will get him, what, 35, 40 feet? Yeah, a little stepper up the hill. I think he was there last round, maybe a shorter last mm -hmm. round. But it's a putt we've seen him knock down many times already. Oh, my gosh, please. Keep be turning. Right shot. I mean, do you Each. know anybody who does better than that? He is a pleasure to watch. I was talking to Anthony after this round, actually, and he said that Nicholas throws that shot better than anybody he's ever seen. That's pretty that's high good, praise. That's a pretty good compliment. Good shot from Joseph. Ricky also going forehand. Does he drive it too far? He does, and that's going to drop down short. Frustration perhaps starting to set in a bit here for Ricky on this front nine at least we talked about this yesterday this is easily the harder of the two nines Joey and bid for birdie is off the cage low Anthony can you get to 11 oh I left chain so close just in the circle those are the tough ones uphill just in the circle I feel so long would love to see him get a bigger lead right there. And a turkey right there for Niklas. That is a way you bounce back after the bogey, double bogey stretch. The one thing that he did very well in round one, every bogey he had, he bounced back with a birdie in the next wow. hole. And so even though he didn't bounce back after the first mistake, he has since jumped back three in a row. We see uh... – Anthony right here with a three-stroke lead, even with with a miss putt right there. He is playing so four under in the front nine is such a good score. He can get he can get to five, and that's just absolutely scorching. And it's crazy to think that a made putt there 
you'd have an opportunity to get to six here. That's, I, that's insane. A six zone on the front nine, it was just, just pff, brain freezing. Hole nine, par three, 465 feet. It's actually 12 feet down in elevation from the tee, but it doesn't feel that way because mm -hmm. it's such a long carry to get over that hill. It's a tight line too to carry. I mean, not only are you throwing it so far, but you have to keep the disc elevated. Yeah, I think if those middle trees weren't in there, this would be one of the easier holes on the course for the field. Because you'd be able to Whoa. fit from something from left to right. Look at, Whoa. is this going to get all the oh, way Oh, of course over? it is. That thing was just on the purest wow. line. Oh, my gosh. And that's just... Nicholas, on to love, folks. That's just manipulating the disc perfectly. What an animal. This is what you call raw power if this gets <laughs> through these branches. <laughs> Forget about it. This is just silly. Well, that's this a, is silly. That's a fairway driver for <laughs> Anthony as well. Let's put it into perspective. That is silly. What a shot. And this needs to get up. <laughs> no, of course, Joey's just playing to the bottom of the hill, and it's a smart play. I mean, if you don't have the elite power, there's no need to even try. Yeah, just a mid range to the bottom. It looks like, I don't know, that doesn't have the height, uh, does it? Yeah, but I guess he was trying to go for the top, but it, it just never had the height out of his yeah. hand. This is kind of far back. And Get off that. Ooh, I don't know if that was the aiming point, but he does get by. Ricky, just a jump putt over the hill. Take that par and walk away. Try to fix things here on the back nine for Ricky. Here's a good putt from Joey right there. Ones you got to make, those little 25-footers, 20-footers, which is right where Anthony is. This golf is so much fun when you just continuously give yourself birdie looks and then also make, like, all of them. That's a five-under on the front nine with that missed putt on the last hole. That is crazy. Great putt there from Nicholas as well to maintain. Well, that puts him in solo yep. uh, second place, I believe, at eight under, unless someone else from another card has gotten to eight under. Let's take a look at the scores here. Yeah, Nicholas Antola trailing Anthony by three shots. I mean, he's just kind of separating himself halfway through the event. Mm -hmm. We have got... 27 holes to go here in Brooksville, Florida for the 2024 Chess.com Invitational presented by Discraft. Easy front nine. I mean, I'm sorry, easy back nine to go. Yep. Easier in comparison. But 18 of the last 27 holes are going to be played here on the back nine. That is true. That's yeah. right. Come on back. See you for the back nine in round two.